There are a lot of off-road lighting options available out there, and today I'm gonna to be showing you several different types of light outputs and beam patterns. I think you're gonna really find this informative. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today on this episode, I'm really excited because we're gonna be taking a deep dive into some different light options and beam patterns and some optics. I think this is gonna be really, really informative. I'm actually really excited to kind of talk about this, but most importantly, go out on the trail and see how these different lights perform. Now, if you have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that I built a relationship with the folks over at Casey Highlights. You know, they have been a great supporter of the channel. And we were actually talking about setting up some lights for the Jeep Cherokee that I've got. And this was before it was in the accident, but we've still got plans to do lights for that. And I'll actually show you at the end of the video, the plan we've got, I think it's gonna be really cool. But during that discussion, we were talking about different types of light outputs. We were talking about halogens versus LED versus HID. We we're talking about different flood patterns. And I was like, wow, this is really informative. I think this is something that my viewers, you guys, would really enjoy talking about. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take a deep look here on the workbench, and we're gonna talk about halogens, HIDs, and LEDs. We're gonna talk about spotlights and floodlights and you know spreads. And then we're gonna talk about some different optics and during that time, I'm gonna take them out on the trail, we're gonna light them up, and we're gonna see how they perform. I think this is gonna be, I think this can be a little bit fun, guys. I'm excited to check this out. Now, let me talk really quick about four things that I consider when buying lights and putting them on my Jeep. You know, I've got quite a few lights on my Jeep, and it's something that I've really kind of thought through. You know, I've gone through several different types of lights throughout the years. I'm really happy with my setup. But right now, there are four things. So the first thing that I think about is the actual beam pattern, right? So I wanna make sure that I have a good spread of light when I'm going down the trail. I wanna make sure that I can see right up in front of me or around the Jeep, but also that I've got some good light that's going straight down the trail. So it's important to make sure that you kinda of mix and match your lights or you know you buy the right kind of light bar that's got a good blend of different types of light patterns. Or you can do what we're gonna be doing today, which is you know pick and choose and throw them on a different bar and throw them out there. And I'll show you the cool bar that we're gonna to use to test these out. It gives you a little bit of versatility. The other thing that I take into consideration is how much amps these lights are drawing. And there's a lot of variety depending on whether or not you're using halogen or LED or HID. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. But you wanna make sure that your vehicle can support all the off-road lights that you're gonna be installing. So that's something to take into consideration. It's very important. The other aspect of it is the one we all think about, and that's how much light it's actually putting out. I mean, it's important to have a good pattern, but if I've got a you know spread pattern, but I can still barely see uh, that's not good you want to make sure that you've got some good illumination out there so we'll be checking that out today as well and the last thing and this is important to me this may not be important to everybody but I like how the lights look on my Jeep you know I think of it kind of a piece of a jewelry you know I'm out on the trail all the time at night and just two weeks ago we were out on the trail and we actually did a couple night runs up in Big Bear and it was a great time I love wheeling at night because it just gives you a whole different perspective of a trail that maybe you've run in the daytime but you know, when you're not wheeling at night and you've got all these lights on your Jeep, you know what? I like them to look nice. I like the styling of a good light on the Jeep to complement you know, the body and the headlights. So for me, it's important on how they actually look. Now, with all that said guys, let's take a look at some different light output options. Now what I've got here are three common types of off-road lighting outputs. We've got a halogen, we've got an HID, and we've got an LED. And they all have their pros and cons. So let's just talk through those a little bit. First off, we've got halogen, which is an incandescent bulb, and it's got a filament that is sealed with some inert gases and a small amount of halogen around it. And then we've got HID, which stands for High Intensity Discharge. And it's actually got a gas inside the bulb that's electrically charged. And then the last one we're gonna look at is the LED, which stands for Light Emitting Diode. Now all three of these lights are similar size and they're all a spread pattern. So we should get similar results from the light output when we get out on the trail. But let's talk about some of the big differences here. And that is watts. So the halogen light 
is a 100 watt light. The HID is only 35 watts, so that's less than half of the halogen. And the LED is the big winner. We're only drawing 20 watts of light. So that's something to really think about when you're mounting these. You know, if you mount a bunch of halogen lights, it's really going to put a drain on your system. Now the intensity of light is a little bit different in these and I think you're gonna find this very interesting. So the halogen, this light here is putting out 2400 lumens. The HID is putting out 3500 lumens and the LED is only putting out 2300 lumens. So that's interesting that the LED is actually less than all of them and I kinda knew that the HID was gonna be the big winner here. I'm really excited to see the difference on the trail of just how much light intensity that's putting out. The next thing you need to consider is your budget because there is a big difference in price in all of these lights. Now the halogens are typically cheaper and for a pair of these it's a little over $170. For a pair of HIDs you're looking at about $220 and for the LEDs, the most expensive is about 400 plus dollars. So that's something that you need to consider when you're determining how many lights you wanna put on there, what your budget can stand. The other thing though that you wanna factor in when you're buying these lights is the life of these lights. And so let's talk about that for a second. The halogens typically out of all three are gonna last the least amount of time, which means this bulb is gonna burn out a lot sooner than the other two. The HIDs have about twice as much life as a halogen but a key thing to point out is you know that's a gas bulb that's being you know electrocuted electrocuted it's being electrified I don't know what the right term is but look it's gonna take a minute to warm up so when you turn it on it's not at full brightness it actually takes a little while to light up unlike the LED when you turn it on boom you get instant light plus LEDs as we all know guys last a long 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 time so that's where the investment comes in this guys you're not going to be replacing that LED for a long time and I'm really looking forward to turning these on and seeing what the coloration of each of these bulbs looks like you know if you've ever seen a cheap set of lights that are out there on the trail they got like that blue hue to them that's definitely not ideal you want more of that what they call 5000k which is more of that yellow kind of white gives you a good visibility. You don't want that blue kind of harsh look. It actually causes fatigue on your eyes. Now, I've got these lights mounted on Casey's brand new crossbar, which is really cool. These mounted up super easy. This is for a 50 inch light bar mount. So you can swap out a light bar and throw this on there and then you can kind of tailor whatever lights you want on there. So this is gonna be fun. This is actually perfect for what we're doing here today because I'm gonna be swapping all kinds of lights out. What do you say we go test these out on the trail? So in order, as I light these up, we've got the halogen, the HID and the LED. And I did not expect the color spectrum to be so different between the three of these. I thought it would be pretty close and just maybe slightly noticeable, but there is really a big difference. Now all three of these lights are a spread pattern, so the beams are very similar. And while they all illuminate the same amount of area, the HID is notably brighter. The LED and the halogen are very similar, but I think the color in the halogen makes it appear less bright. I think the results from all three of these are pretty interesting. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Now let's talk about light beam patterns because this is very important. You want to make sure that you have different types of light beams coming off of your vehicle. You know, it's good to have a spotlight that shines directly down the trail and to have some kind of widespread fog light that gives you some up close illumination. It's very important. But let me just point out something that's kind of bothered me over the years and that is from manufacturer to manufacturer, there is no industry standard for what says the degree of a spotlight is this or the degrees of a fog light is that you know I did a side-by-side -side comparison of two floodlights once upon a time and they were completely different from the two manufacturers so I really wish they would come together and kind of come up with some kind of industry standard that would help us consumers out a lot now what are we looking at here for this test so what I've got is I have three LEDs one is a spot one is a wide 40 and the other one is a fog light and then I've got the halogens over here and I've got one in a spotlight and I've got it in a spread. And there are really only some subtle differences which kind of changes the beam pattern. If you look here, the spread light in the halogen is really just a different type of lens on there. Whereas on the LEDs, it's the reflector that kind of reshapes the light pattern. So I think it's important uh, to make sure you're choosing the right kind of lights and where you want to mount them on your, on your vehicle. Let's go uh, hit the trail and see what these look like. 
where I was doing all my night filming was about 15 minutes away, and as I was passing folks, I'm sure they were thinking, that's a unique light setup. Okay, first we're gonna look at the LEDs, and here is the spot, and then the wide 40, and then the fog light. You can really see how focused that spotlight is, and ideally you would want that pointed straight down the trail, not at the ground like I have it here for this test. The wide 40 adds a nice coverage, but while the fog light is not as bright as the other two, it really illuminates the side of the trail. Now a quick look at the halogens. And remember that for this test, we only have a spot and a spread. And there is a difference between the two beams, but I will say it's not as drastically noticeable as the LEDs. But if you watch when I turn the spread on, you can definitely see the bushes on the side much easier than when just using the spot. Now for this last test, I don't know how much variance we're gonna see, but we're gonna try it out. What I wanna do is check out these two LEDs down here, which are these little square LEDs, but they have forward facing diodes, right? So that light is just coming straight out. Whereas these two, I've got a rectangle one and I've got a round one, which are bouncing that light off the reflector to project it out. So I'm just curious if there's a big difference in the light. I mean, obviously there are different sizes and there are different shapes, uh, but Hey, that's what we're doing. We're just having fun testing stuff out. Let's go see what these look like. All right, and first up is the rectangular shaped light and then the round shaped light. Now, a significant difference there in the amount of light output and the beam. And to be fair, they are two totally different lights, but we just wanted to check it out. And here is that small single LED, and then there is the spotlight. So actually, I was pretty impressed on how much light just that single LED put out, but definitely a lot more with that uh, spotlight there. Nice little lights. I hope you guys have enjoyed checking out all the lights. I had a lot of fun actually putting this all together and just kind of seeing all the differences. Now, I told you at the beginning of the video that this all started from a conversation about the lights that we wanted to put on the XJ. And while we've got a lot of work to do on the XJ before we talk about doing lights, I wanted to show you what the game plan is because I think it's really cool. Check this out, guys. This is that new crossbar with all these G46 rectangular lights that we're gonna mount up there on the roof. I think this is just gonna look so good. You know, the XJ has that boxy design. It's got the rectangle headlights. This is gonna really be a nice styling option. And oh, by the way, it's gonna light up the trail a lot. So we'll be talking about this much, much later, guys. I can't wait to get this installed. Hey, look, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, please hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. And for everybody out there, I wanna say this. Please make sure when you're out on the trail to travel responsibly and pack it in, pack it out. Thanks for watching.